Vincent van Gogh was born in 1853 and died in 1890. He was one of the most famed artists to come out of the Netherlands and the 19th century. His use of the artistic technique in pasto, which is the use of thick layers of paint or pastel, makes his later artworks highly recognisable and unique. However, Van Gogh lived a tumultuous life and this, in time, would impact his mental health. The disintegration of his mental health is reflected in his self-portraits and, in examining them, it is possible to gain a deeper understanding of the artistic and psychological motivations behind Van Gogh's artwork. This disintegration is evident in the following three portraits from his famous self-portrait series. These are self-portrait with dark felt hat, self-portrait with bandaged ear, and self-portrait. Before I began my analysis of Van Gogh's work, I took some time reading and understanding some of the letters he sent to his brother, Theo Van Gogh. I found these letters on the website vangoghletters.com. It seems that throughout Van Gogh's life, he faced family rejection which created a changing residential situation and an increasingly difficult personality. However, the support from his brother, both financially and emotionally, remained constant. I thought that the language displayed in these letters indicated the strengths in their relationship. For example, I thought the fact that Vincent van Gogh was comfortable talking to Theo about his financial and mental instability allowed Theo to take a proactive approach in seeking help for his brother's health. I also thought that these letters suggested that Theo had a positive, influential effect on Van Gogh's life and, to an extent, helped to maintain his stability. Reading between the lines, it is clear that they had a caring relationship because most letters begin by asking about each other's health and current events. I thought it was quite endearing reading the letters as it seems to have given Van Gogh a sense of security. The letters are also useful when attempting to gain an insight on Van Gogh's artwork and when attempting to piece together a timeline of events that occurred in Van Gogh's short life. They also provide some understanding of the reasons why Van Gogh behaved and expressed himself in the way he did in his paintings. The first painting that I analysed was Self-Portrait with Dark Felt Hat, painted in 1886 and is one of Van Gogh's earliest known self-portraits. To begin analysing the self-portrait, I deconstructed the different components evident in the painting. The first thing that became apparent to me is that the painting appears to be very influenced by other artists' work. In Van Gogh's early years as an artist, he spent some time living in London, England, which is home to galleries like the National Portrait Gallery, where Van Gogh would have admired the works of artists like Francois Millet and Jules Breton. These painters are widely known as peasant painters, as their paintings display an accurate insight into the everyday lifestyles of real people. I thought that Van Gogh's facial expressions and features are significant indications that his work was inspired by these other artists. Van Gogh's expression is one of a sombre and gaunt looking man. His dark eyes and dishevelled hair also exude sadness. Although the composition of his painting could be an accurate representation of reality, Van Gogh could be attempting to impose a deeper message. I determined that the darkness one senses from this painting could possibly mean that he was aware of his changing personality and mental state. Secondly, throughout Van Gogh's life he attempted to use his income in an effective manner. Although he was sometimes unsuccessful and often suffered from insufficient funds, he found a way of producing some of the world's most breathtaking art, as an artist new to the industry, it could be suggested that Van Gogh had a lack of wealth, both financially and in terms of artistic knowledge. I thought that the dark tones that he used in this painting may be a result of financial instability. Darker toned paints are significantly cheaper than more expensive, brighter colours. Furthermore, if you choose to use yourself as a model for a self-portrait, or you observe ordinary people, it is cheaper than paying the expenses of hiring models. Another thing that I picked up on is that the dark green coat that is seen in this painting is also featured in some of Van Gogh's later self-portraits. This could imply that Van Gogh faced financial strain throughout his life as he could not afford to buy a new coat. On the other hand, it is clear that Van Gogh was heavily influenced by artists that also observed others and used darker colours. Thus, Van Gogh could have been attempting to duplicate this style simply because it was one in which he liked and admired. 
Contrary to these darker tones, I found it strange that in the self-portrait there is a halo-like ring around Van Gogh. These lighter tones may signify that he feels alive as a result of finding his way in the artistic industry, as this painting was the start of Van Gogh beginning to explore his new artistic techniques in the hope of finding his own unique style. In time, the star became one of the most recogni recognisable styles ever. Van Gogh chose to place himself in front of a dark wooden wall. This immediately darkens the painting as it covers the majority of the canvas and creates a mysterious effect. Overall, I thought that a self-portrait with dark felt hat was evidence of Van Gogh's attempts to explore other te techniques and so this was the first step into Van Gogh's finding his own artistic style. Letters from Vincent Van Gogh to Theo Van Gogh are very supportive when attempting to understand the motivations behind his paintings. For this painting I found some relevant letters relating to the correct time period. The two letters that I have presented here suggest that Van Gogh was aware that he was being influenced by other artists' work and that he was aware of his financial strain. I found the second letter to be most interesting as it suggests that he had a plan for his future as an artist. I find this to be inspirational. The second self-portrait of Vincent van Gogh that I studied was Self-Portrait with Bandaged Ear, painted in 1889 and depicts van Gogh's most well-known episode of mental illness in which he mutilated his ear. At the time of the event, van Gogh lived in the south of France with fellow artist Paul Gagoyne in a house which famously became known as the Yellow House. The van Gogh Museum indicates that the relationship between the artists collapsed due to different artistic techniques, styles and their characters. This caused the tension between them to rise steadily to the point that one evening Van Gogh threatened Gagoin with a razor. Later that night Van Gogh cut off the bottom half of his own ear. There is speculation surrounding the motivations behind the features of the self-portrait. In the painting, above Van Gogh's left shoulder is a blank canvas. This leaves me, the audience, with questions. From my understanding, this could indicate that Van Gogh aims to produce more work or that he has finite ideas for paintings. The most likely reason Van Gogh chose to include a blank canvas is to show that to the doctors that and the audience that he wants to forget about the past and start a new canvas. Another feature of the painting that I noticed was that Van Gogh is wearing a fluffy hat and a green overcoat that has been seen in previous portraits. This left me with a question of why he's wearing outside clothes in his studio, studio and therefore why it would be cold in his studio. Some people suggest that this could be a lack of a sign of a lack of permanence in his life, which could relate to Van Gogh's feelings of a lack of warmth and security. Another thing that leaves me with questions is Van Gogh's use of colour. This contrasts with bright events of darkness and so-called madness. I thought that this could also reflect Van Gogh's matured painting style, which now included colour and long controlled vertical brush strokes. However, I thought it strange that the brush strokes used in the face and the hat differ, which may suggest turmoil. When researching Van Gogh's letters to his brother, I was interested to see wh whether there was any evidence of Van Gogh's awareness of his declining mental health. It appears that he and his brother worked towards regaining his mental health. This is very clear through the use of vocabulary in the first letter in particular. Van Gogh's use of words like dreadfully and tormented by anxiety suggests that Van Gogh is affected by his mental health. The letters also display Van Gogh's progressive artistic styles and techniques whilst in the care of, sample, of the Semple Asylum in Saint-Rémy in France. From this I was able to determine that while Van Gogh's mental health was clearly in decline, he was exploring and expanding his artistic ability. The final self-portrait that I analysed is titled Self-Portrait. The self-portrait was painted in the final year of Van Gogh's life and demonstrates his most recognisable artistic technique, titled Impasto. When analysing the painting, different aspects of the painting immediately provoked questions. Firstly, it seems that he is proud of his profession as an established artist. This seems evident because at the bottom left of the painting, Van Gogh is seen holding a paint palette and paint brushes. Similarly, Artists like Rembrandt also use paints, palettes and paintbrushes in their own self-portraits. 
This provides another example of Van Gogh's artistic style and aspects of his painting being influenced by other artists, as Van Gogh would have seen such self-portraits in the Louvre in Paris. By painting himself holding a paint palette and paintbrushes, it suggests that Van Gogh is striving to be taken seriously as an artist. I also noticed a different in the, difference in the colour scheme and artistic techniques Van Gogh uses. It seems that as Van Gogh's artistic ability begins to thrive, the colours he uses become more vivid and bold. Van Gogh's positioning on the canvas also raises questions. In self-portrait, Van Gogh is centralised on a blue canvas, whereas in self-portrait with dark felt hat, he is positioned on the left-hand side of a darkly painted canvas. To me, this indicates that Van Gogh became more, in, more confident in his artistic ability. Finally, Van Gogh's blue overcoat seems to merge into the background. This could be an indication that Van Gogh does not think he has been acknowledged as an artist. I think that this view is supported by the fact that Van Gogh is holding a paint palette and could be a method of showing the audience that he views himself as an artist, but society does not. There are also very few colours on the paint palette, and the colours that are on the palette are those that are evident in the painting. Perhaps this shows that Van Gogh is still unable to purchase a vast variety of coloured paints. This being said, this painting displays Van Gogh's technique in its most technical and impressive form. Overall, I think that self-portrait predominantly conveys Van Gogh's wishes to be widely accepted as a legitimate artist. The letter that I have presented here demonstrates the fact that Van Gogh's progressive and expanded, expanding artistic style is still being influenced by other artists. This is evident as he seems to be envious of some of the work that he has viewed in the Louvre, using words like beautiful. I think that this may also indicate the fact that art seems to be a therapeutic in stabilising his mental health, as it seems that he enjoyed spending time in art galleries. As a result of analysing his work, it is observable that Van Gogh's artistic technique developed while his mental health disintegrated. I think that the main motivations of his artwork may have been to prove his health prove himself as an artist and provide a timeline of events that happened in his life. I think that Van Gogh's changing and developing self-image as, as demonstrated in the self-portrait series provided us today with a window he knew best, colour, composition and imagery, to tell us his story and state of mind. He left a legacy of paintings for future generations to debate and discuss the emotions and circumstances that provoked him to create them.